Hi there! You are watching a video of above ground storage tanks in industrial plants. What are seismic effects in a storage tank? Above ground flat bottom tanks built to store liquids must be designed to withstand seismic loads. These loads are determined considering the effective mass of both, the stored product and the tank itself, and also considering the loads acting on the wall due to the hydrostatic column of the liquid. The seismic analysis of storage tanks must be carried out according to the rules of the API 650 code Annex E. Aspects to be verified are mainly three. Tank stability against overturning moment. The magnitude of the moment is calculated and the requirements of anchor bolts is verified. Number and size of anchor bolts. Sliding resistance due to the base shear and the freeboard required due to sloshing. To determine if the tank is stable against a seismic event, Annex E of the API 650 code must be applied. Steps are the following. First, we calculate the seismic response. This is the spectral acceleration. Second, we obtain the design loads which are overturning moment and base shear. And third, we calculate the loads resisting the seismic event. In a seismic event, the fluid inside the tank can be divided into two components, one impulsive and one convective. The impulsive component is the part of the liquid at the bottom part of the tank. This mass moves jointly with the tank as one element. Meanwhile, the convective portion is located in the upper part of the tank, which is less contained, reason for which sloshing may occur. Storage tanks with a flat bottom and resting on the ground, intended to store liquids, must be designed to withstand seismic loads. These forces are determined by considering the effective mass of the product and the tank itself, also the pressures caused by the liquid column of the fluid. Seismic actions are a very special issue in the design of storage tanks, especially in areas with a high degree of seismicity. The lateral movement of the tank assembly, caused by the forces acting on the center of gravity of the tank and multiplied by the arm with respect to the bottom, cause a shear force and an overturning moment at the base. To verify that the seismic effects can be withstood by a tank, it is necessary to determine the acceleration spectrum. This spectrum depends mainly on the location. The API 650 code presents three methods to determine the seismic profile. A map of regions based on the seismic code AC7 location within the USA. Sites not defined by the AC7 code, simplified by very effective method. And the specific spectral response of the site. According to the requirements of the project and the regulations to be applied, the spectrum of accelerations is determined. To obtain the design load to which the storage tank will be subjected to, the following procedure is followed. First, the natural period of vibration of the tank is calculated for its impulsive and convective components. Second, Based on the spectral response, impulsive and convective spectral acceleration is obtained. 
Third, the effective weight of the impulsive and convective components of the product is determined. And fourth, and finally, the action points for both components are defined, that is, the coordinate where the masses of the product act with respect to the base of the tank. Once all the previous coefficients have been obtained, now we are in a good position to determine the desired load. The overturning moment at the base of the tank must be determined by equation indicated in section E615, which is reproduced below. As it can be seen, the overturning moment is a vectorial sum, square root of the sum of the squares, of the impulsive and convective components of the overturning moment. In turn, these components are obtained by multiplying the spectral acceleration by the effective weight and by the action points coordinates. As indicated in section E61 of the code, the base share of the tank will be the vectorial sum of the impulsive and convective component, that is, the square root of the squares. On the other hand, the shear is calculated as the spectral acceleration multiplied by the effective weight of both components, impulsive and convective. It should be mentioned that the impulsive shear takes into account the weight of the tank components, while for the convective shear only the stored product intervenes. Once the seismic loads acting on the tank have been defined, the tank stability must be checked. In other words, whether the tank has sufficient stability to support the design loads by itself or if it requires additional support elements. Depending on the magnitude of the seismic loads, a storage tank may be self-supported without any anchoring elements, or supported with anchoring elements. In turn, resistant to seismic loads is provided by the weight of the tank wall, the weight of the stored product, and mechanical supports, anchor bolts. To determine whether the tank is stable by itself, self-supported, or if it requires mechanical supporting devices, anchor bolts, the J-factor must be calculated as indicated in paragraph E6211. As specified by the table shown on the screen, when coefficient J is greater than 1.54, the tank must be supported. The requirement of anchor bolts, factor J, is determined according to the equations indicated in paragraph E6211 and reproduced on the screen, where the stability factor J is directly proportional to the overturning moment at the base of the tank wall, MRW, and inversely proportional to the square of the diameter, D, to the weight of the wall and roof of the tank and acting at the base, WT, the resistance force to uplift, WA, and the load due to internal pressure. When the J factor is greater than 1.54, the tank does not support the seismic loads by itself and requires mechanical support. Anchorage design due to seismic loads must be performed as indicated in section E6212 of the code and shown on the screen. The designed load of the anchor bolt is a function of the uplift, which is directly proportional to the overturning moment and inversely proportional to the diameter of the tank. The other fundamental aspect that must be verified from the point of view of seismic stability 
is the tank sliding due to base shear. This verification is only performed for tanks not requiring anchor bolts due to overturning moment. The sliding resistance force VS is calculated according to section E76 of the code and it is obtained by multiplying the resistance weight, wall, roof, bottom and product weight by the coefficient of friction between the bottom of the tank and the foundation. If the resistance force VS is greater than the shear V, mechanical anchoring is not required. When seismic actions occur, one of the effects suffered by the stored product is the wave phenomenon, known as sloshing. To prevent the liquid from spilling, and in the case of tanks with floating roofs, so that the roof does not leave the tank, the height of the freeboard must be determined. The freeboard reaches a certain height above the operation level and depends on the convective portion of the fluid. This height above the liquid operation level to contain sloshing freeboard is determined by the equations of paragraph E72 and reproduced on screen. It is a function of the diameter of the tank and the sloshing acceleration coefficient. This coefficient depends, among other things, on the seismic user group, SUG, and on the frequency of convective vibration of the liquid. There are different ways of counteracting seismic instability when the tank is affected by the loads according to the previous steps. By default, tanks are always designed as self-anchored, without anchor bolts. If there is a situation of seismic instability, it is a good practice to follow the steps below to increase resistance to overturning. Consider an annular plate at the bottom of the tank if it has not been applied yet. If already in place, increase its thickness complying with the limitations of the code. Increase the thickness of the first wall of the shell course. Increase the diameter of the tank and decrease the height if possible. Use anchor bolts. Or combine all the previous options.